What's up YouTube? In this tutorial, we'll create this page loader interaction that sort of counts up to 100 and then reveals the hero section underneath. It has some nice easings on our count up timer, and when we reload the page, it starts from a higher number and loads up a bit faster. So let's get started. In our Webflow build, we have a loader progress div. This will be our progress bar we can animate the width of. It's positioned to absolute to its parent. Inside the parent, we also have a child container element with a text color of red. Now that red font color is bleeding into the background color, but we can select a blend mode of difference and now it's gonna invert based on the color underneath it. So when I move the progress bar, you'll notice the text color changes too. Now by default on page load, we want the progress bar to be set to 0% width and we also want an empty text content inside here. So I'll hold the shift key plus the space bar to create an empty text there. And basically this is just gonna remove any sort of page flicker while these elements first load up. So then I'm gonna head over to greensock.com and I'll scroll down to the get GSAP now button. And basically we wanna import uh, two libraries. First the GSAP core, and then we're also gonna add the custom ease library there. And I'll just copy this code and head over to Webflow. We'll go down to the before body tag and paste that in. And I'm also gonna add in a link to my code sandbox file for me to write the script in. So to get started with our code, let's create a JavaScript object called counter and set its initial value to zero. Next, we're gonna create a GSAP timeline. Instead of affecting an element with a class, we'll affect our counter object. And we wanna change its value to 100 from zero over the course of seven seconds. Now, while that's happening, we need to be updating some text on our page. So we'll create a function called update loader text. And basically inside this, we wanna grab the paragraph element loader number that we have in Webflow. And we're gonna select that element with jQuery like so. And we wanna update the text of it to be our counter objects value. So the value of that object there. And we need this to run every time our animation changes the value. So we'll call in one update and this will just run every time our animation changes, it'll update the text of our loader number. So if we save that and we refresh here, you'll notice it's counting up, but with a very long, ugly string of decimal points. So we need to round this up to a whole number. We'll just create a variable called progress and we'll set it equal to math.round. So we can pass in a number we wanna round up. In this case, it'll be the counter value. And then we'll just grab that progress variable and plug it into our text content. And now when we save that and refresh here, now we get nice whole numbers counting up there and that's looking good. So next, let's just animate sort of our progress bar. So I'll copy that point on the timeline. We're gonna grab our loader progress here. And this time we will be animating sort of a class instead. So I'll just plug that in here. And we're, we're gonna wanna animate as the width. It's at a width of 0% in Webflow. We'll be animating it to 100% width over the same duration. And we want these two points on the timeline to happen at the same time. So I'll pass in a zero to this step here. So they happen together. And if we save that and refresh now, you'll notice the progress bars counting up at the same time as the numbers and they both complete at the same time. So now we can apply an ease to our count up animation. This will affect where it speeds up and slows down. I'm at the green sock ease visualizer and I'll select a custom ease. Here we can move points around, delete them by hitting the delete key, alt click to add new points and even adjust the curve of the ease if we'd like. Here I'm gonna go ahead and add in the ease I've already created for this project. And here you'll see it speeds up at the beginning slows down towards the middle and picks up pace again at the end. So what I'm gonna do is copy this ease value and I'll head over to my code sandbox. We'll apply the ease to the counter animation first. So here I have this ease and it's a pretty long string of this ease value. What I can do instead is create a variable maybe called custom ease and we'll create that variable up here. We'll say let custom ease and we'll set it equal to the long string there. So now I can use this ease property for the second animation too. And if I change it for one, it'll change for both. Let's do the same for the duration in case we ever wanna update that. So we'll just create a variable called um, something like loader duration, and we'll set it equal to seven seconds by default. And now we can copy this loader duration value and just replace the duration inside both our animations. So now if we save this and refresh here, 
we should notice it's slowing down right here in the middle and picks up speed again at the end. Now if the user refreshes the page, we don't want to make them sit through this long animation again. Instead, we want to speed it up. I'm going to use session storage, which works a lot like cookies. I have a full tutorial on session storage and local storage on my Patreon page, where we cover how to do things like persistent, site-wide, light mode, and dark mode. In this case, we're just checking to see if the user has visited any page on our site before in this tab. In that case, it would not be a first time visit. And we want to take our loader duration variable and update it to be two seconds instead of seven. And we also want to take our counter element and we want its starting value to be 75. So it counts up from that to 100 using GSAP. So this is just going to update for anything that's not a first time visit. If I open the site in a new tab, that's considered first time visit. And we see the full animation over the seven seconds. Now, if we were to refresh, it's going to start at 75 and it'll count to two seconds much faster. Lastly, we just need a way to hide our loader when the animation's over. So I'm going to add a div onto the page and give it the class of trigger and I'll set it to display none. We're going to say whenever a click happens on this trigger element, we're going to play our hide loader animation. This just moves a few elements out the way, fades the opacity down, and sets the loader to display none like so. So by default, our loader needs to be display none so we can see the content in the designer. And we're gonna turn it back to display flex on page load with CSS so it happens pretty instant and we don't have any sort of page flicker. So we'll just select our loader, set its display to flex, and then we can save and publish. So we wanna run some code whenever our counter's finished. So I'm gonna create a function called in loader animation. And what we're gonna do is select this trigger div here that has our Webflow interaction applied. And we're just going to target it and do dot click. So we cause a click, we cause our interaction to play whenever this function is run. So we just want this function to run whenever our animation or our timeline is over. So we'll say on complete, whenever this animation's over, run our function here, which will cause a click on the trigger. And that's gonna happen based on the duration of the animation. So again, if I open this in a new tab, we'll see it's a bit slower. And when that animation finally comes to an end, we'll notice it clicks on the trigger div and plays our exit animation. And on refresh, this is a bit faster, but still, as soon as the animation's over, it plays the exit. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one.